Good morning. Welcome to Member Focus Monday. I'm Christina Schaefer, Social Media Manager for HAR. I'm joined this morning by Marilyn Wilson of the Wave Group. Marilyn, welcome. Thank you, Christina. It's great to be here. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. And I know it's early over there in California, but we really appreciate it. Yes, coffee, coffee is a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we could just start out, uh, if you would just introduce yourself to our members. Sure. So um, Wave Group has worked with HIR for many years. We're the group that actually fields all of the consumer research um, that we use to try to help, you know, figure out the right technologies to choose, the right service and support programs to use, and of course, to help members, agents, and brokers understand the best ways to deal with consumers today. Mm -hmm. Very good. Um, so we just want to get right into it. Um, we've heard, you know, mixed mixed answers around this, but I'm just curious what you've seen. Um, we've heard about a decline in maybe the number of consumers that are wanting to buy a home. Do you, do you think that's true? Have you seen that? You know, I'm happy to say that, no, I have not seen that. Um, I, that's kind of the general perception. People like to say that that's what's happening. And the truth is that's not what's happening at all. And in fact, where it's the most interesting is with millennials. Mm -hmm. That's where a lot of people say, oh, you know, they're not going to buy anymore and they're just going to rent. The truth is they're more interested in buying than even older generations are, which is awesome. Wow, yeah. Um, the, the one thing, of course, that they they worry about is being able to afford the down payment because of, of many of you have, have been in that world and know how much you can uh, accrue in debt from being in college. Mm -hmm. That's their biggest worry. So many of them say that they're going to count on their parents for getting the down payment, and I'm sure many of them do. I know I'll probably do that when my child's ready. Um, <laughs> but they also talk about the fact that they appreciate um, some of the work that HAR has where you have there's pages where you can look for the down payment assistance programs available. Mm -hmm. So they're very excited when you can do that. And I'll give you a little uh, little quip. This is not from Houston, but something you guys could definitely use. I was working with a gentleman in Alabama, and he promoted down payment assistance programs via Facebook. In fact, he had an ad that said, looking for free $7,500 you can use for a down payment. And of course, <laughs> everyone's looking for that, right? He actually <laughs> sold 17 homes off of that ad because he had information about down payments. Mm -hmm. So definitely something for people to look at. Yeah, I actually know of locally a realtor who just started running ads about that uh, $15,000, free $15,000. Mm -hmm. uh, and she has all kinds of information about it. Um, so I'm, I'll, be, I'll have to ask her how that worked out for her. <laughs> Absolutely, it's a, yeah. it's a great idea. And we all know Facebook ads are very affordable. So it's a great way to give it a shot. Sure. Um, well, so that's, I mean, that's encouraging to hear that although the perspective is that maybe millennials specifically don't want to buy a home, you're not finding that's true. It's really that they just need, you know, the resources to be able to buy that home. Absolutely. Once they get in the home, you know, many of them have good jobs because they've gone to those great colleges that are so expensive, mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's difficult to get in. Once you're there, they're okay. So that's the biggest thing. And um, also uh, helping them understand what the mortgage cost really is. So when you're, they don't want to just see the price of the home, but they want to understand the actual payment. So wherever you can promote that in your, you know, listing promotion and things, you do that as well. Very good. So I want to, uh, we've spoken a lot about iBuyers on this platform and just trying try to help our members understand that, um, you know, that, that whole concept. I know it's pretty early in the game, but do you know any information as far as consumer perspective when it comes to iBuyers? Well, we're just about to field a study on that in Houston, so we're going to know a lot more soon. But what we what we found so far is that um, there's kind of a particular demographic where it works best. It works best in areas that have many, as you know, some people would sort of call cookie cutter homes and developments where homes are very, very similar and very predictable. Mm -hmm. um, it generally, um, but home um, buyers are going for the lower price point. So maybe the 180 to 200 ish range mm -hmm. is where it's most popular. Um, but it is definitely something for us to pay attention to. Um, there's not, you know, a huge number of homes that have been sold yet, but the tra trajectory is very high. And as you know, Houston is a hotbed for this. <laughs> Many of the uh, of buy buyer um, programs are in your market. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's something, you know, the way kind of I look at it is there's going to be some level of, of people that want to do that. The best thing to think about is to try to make your home selling process as simple as possible and take on as much of a role as you can to support someone in finding a painter or getting someone to do some landscaping in the front to clean it up or whatever the kinds of things that they need. Um, it's certainly it's still going to be more work than handing someone a key and not doing any work. Um, <laughs> 
but it's, you know, definitely think about that. And also remind people that the fees that people pay for iBuyers are higher than they are when they work with a regular realtor. Right. Um, so that's, a, that's important to remember, but uh, they're not going away. There's a lot of money behind them. And uh, it's definitely something we're going to have to work our way through as an industry for sure. We had Jeremy Conaway on recently and he was, uh, we were discussing iBuyers and he really was emphasizing, um, you know, for our members to create a value proposition. And, and I think that you could probably agree that that's, that's really where there's uh, room to improve for a lot of agents because we're just not used to these iBuyers and maybe we're looking at them from a, from a way like, Oh, I need to do something about this, but really, we need to kind of internalize and create that value proposition, I think is probably the best solution. Absolutely. And one of the things that I would highly recommend that we've seen in research many times, and we actually two things that we, we kind of forget and we kind of take for granted. One is if you're an agent and you've gone through many transactions, the process to you is relatively, I wouldn't say comfortable, but it's relatively predictable, right? Mm -hmm. Consumers don't have that experience. And so to the degree that you can come to them at the very beginning of the transaction and explain to them everything that's going to happen. And then of course, keep in touch with them as, as the process is going through it, mm -hmm. that can make a big difference. Also remember to use the online transaction management system available through HIR mm -hmm. because they want transparency. You know, it's two o'clock in the morning and they wake up and they're worried. They want to be able to go on and see where everything is. <laughs> yeah. That, that's really important to remember that they haven't done it. And here's another, this is a little bit of an aside, but something that always amazes me. I was talking to a, um, an agent in Florida. She had a $30 million listing she was going after. Everybody likes those, of course. <laughs> she lost the listing. The reason she lost the listing was because the other agent told them, told, told the seller that she was going to put it on the MLS. And she said, and so she went back to the buyer or to the seller and said, you know, I thought we were going to get the deal. What happened? And she said, oh, we loved you. We were totally going to give it to you. But then the other agent told us that she was going to promote it to 35,000 agents around the community. So we had to go with her. Mm -hmm. Right. Would you drive yourself <laughs> crazy with that kind of a comment? But these yeah. are the kinds of things like don't take anything for granted, I guess, is the okay. point. And take credit for all of the amazing things that you do, because sometimes agents are so good that the consumer doesn't think you're doing any work. You have to remind them that you are good and that, you know, I know you didn't have to deal with this today, but just wanted to let you know, I dealt with X, Y, and Z today, and I dealt mm -hmm. with this disclosure and this home inspection issue and whatever else, right? Right. Just remind that, you know, everybody that you, you they don't know what you do. Don't assume you know, that they know, know. right. Exactly. <laughs> Very good. Uh, well, one thing you, you, you mentioned in that is, is communication. Um, Overall, what are you seeing as far as satisfaction of consumers with agent responsiveness? That's definitely an area of, of, of improvement. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, that word is so broad and in so many different areas. They, they get frustrated sometimes when they reach out early on in the process, especially through HAR or other places, mm -hmm. and nobody answers them back when they're inquiring about a property. They'll, they'll say to me, well, don't they want to sell the house? <laughs> Good point. Um, All signs point to maybe not, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then usually during the transaction, people are pretty happy with the responsiveness. But again, they're worried, they're nervous. Even if they've been through it before, of course, the you know the real estate market changes so regularly. Mm -hmm. So to the degree, whenever there's going to be something coming to them that you stay ahead of it and say, hey, this is coming. Here's what it means. There's no challenges. You can sign it or whatever it might be. Um, <clears throat> they really appreciate that. So you you can't be responsive enough. I know it's very difficult when someone's texting you when you're in the middle of an appointment and things like that. Um, but you, you kind of have to find that balance, which is difficult, but really important. I think a lot of these um, lead generation tools are trying to help agents with that as well. I know um, mm -hmm. Zillow, they, they remind you now HAR's lead generation tool. It'll remind you, hey, just, just so you know, 30 minutes ago, you got a lead. You need to follow up. So I, I think it's helpful that these different tools are, are reminding us to, to try to yeah. be responsive because like you said, you're out on an appointment, you get a lead, you know, maybe at the end of that appointment, you've forgotten about that lead. So I think that, that that's helpful as well, but we ourselves really have to take on the responsibility of responsiveness because, you know, if, if we're not responsive, they'll just move on to another agent that is, right? 
Exactly. And and they don't expect even 30 minutes. They expect instant results like all of us do. When we send a text, we want someone to answer us instantly, right? <laughs> yeah. That's exactly what they're expecting too. So even if you're in the middle of an appointment, you stop for 10 seconds and say, hey, love to talk to you soon. Helping one of my clients, can I call you back in 30 minutes? That's mm -hmm. fine. You don't have to answer them at that moment, but you have to acknowledge them at that moment. I uh, saw an, an agent speak and, and she said that she actually will whip out her phone and do a quick video. Just so you Perfect. know, I'm here at my kid's soccer game right now, but I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And she says that even though it's not always that she's out working, she's doing something personal, just that that touch of, look, you can see that I'm, I'm busy right now. She says it always works. <laughs> Absolutely. Because people know that people are busy. They just don't want to be ignored. Right. So if they know they, you've acknowledged them, then that, the video is a great idea. And we can all do it in two seconds with our phones these days. It makes it so easy. Exactly. So um, on that same topic of, of communication, what type of communication are you seeing most effective with consumers? Well, it kind of depends on where they are in the process. But I would say there's a few things that, that we can all think about doing. One is that many people are really hungry for understanding the market, whether they be a homeowner and someone wants to understand if it may be time to sell, uh, whether it be someone that's just trying to figure out the best market. And you know, some people are, are using their homes. And this is one thing we have heard from millennials is that there's kind of two different groups. There's some that are sort of buy and hold, if you will. Mm -hmm. And then there's many others that are saying, I wanna buy my first home. I wanna fix it up, do some really fun things with it, and then make some money and keep, you know, keep upgrading. That group particularly is very interested in understanding where they have the best shot of return. So what's, <clears throat> excuse me, what's happening in a particular market or, you know, where's, where's that market going? So a lot of them are very interested in that. Mm -hmm. um, they're also very interested in, in understanding that you understand the depth of the, of the valuation you're providing to their home if, they're, if you're doing a CMA for them. Mm -hmm. So the more professional and the more information that you leverage, again, HA offers all kinds of tools to do that. Mm -hmm. um, they, they basically, I think, net net, they're trying to, Think of this more as a, it's, it's emotional, of course, but they also want to look at the business aspect of this because it's such a large investment. And so to the degree we position ourselves as business executives and, and people that have a depth of understanding of the market in which we're operating, um, you know, it's not enough to just be friendly anymore, even though millennials, one of the things they like the best is when someone is friendly. <laughs> someone, some of them say they even want to like be friends and go out and have dinner with their, with their agents, right? Um, but they're definitely looking for us to step up our game in terms of not just being salespeople, but truly being almost like counselors or consultants. Yeah. Um, something else related to consumers. What, uh, what type of advertising? We mentioned Facebook ads. You said they're, they're pretty inexpensive, but what type of advertising do you see working best with consumers? Is, is a Facebook ad effective? Is a billboard effective? You know, what, what are you seeing as most effective? Well, certainly Facebook is very effective. Um, and in, in Houston, one of the things that um, I, I know many of you know this, but just to underline this, the Houston Association of Realtors website or now homesandrentals.com is the 10th largest website in real estate in the entire country, mm -hmm. which is amazing. There's no other MLS in the entire country that's even close to that number. And so interestingly, 98% of the people that we talk to Talk about the fact they want their home promoted on HAR.com. Mm -hmm. So number one, by far the best thing you can do is to make sure they understand that it's on HAR.com. <laughs> right. um, sure. And that again, that's not normal in any other market in the entire country. So it's something all of you have as a unique skill or a unique uh, advantage. Mm -hmm. Of course, others appreciate things like Zillow and they appreciate uh, certainly Facebook and other social media types of things. I think Consumers, even Instagram now is getting very, very popular. People understand the visual mediums are a great way to promote homes mm -hmm. and a great way place for them to find homes as well. But HAR by far in your market, number one. Yeah. Um, so what, we, we talked a little bit about iBuyers and maybe value propositions. What do you think consumers are looking for in a realtor? They're really looking for a partner, I guess would be the best way I would describe it. <clears throat> They're looking for someone that, um, has the proven expertise and yet still has the enthusiasm to work with them. Here's a great example. There was a, a, a client who had a very successful transaction with an agent. And when her experience rating came back, it wasn't very positive. Mm -hmm. And you know, the, the question was why? So the agent was very upset. So luckily she called the person and she said, 
you were amazing through the entire transaction. You were there for me, you were supportive, you were educational, you told me everything to do. But then when we got to the closing table, you were talking to the other agent about what you were gonna eat for lunch. You weren't paying attention to the most important thing in my life at this moment, right? <laughs> so we have to remember that, we just keep it fresh. Like it is our first, it, it, it is our first in terms of enthusiasm, but it is definitely not our first in terms of experience. Right. So that's important. And, and back to client experience rating, that is also something that many of them look for. They look for what have you done in the past? Who have you done it with? In what markets? Um, that's a really important program to, to participate in. In fact, in the research we did about two years ago, we found that one third of the people that had bought homes had looked at the client experience rating and, and had not so much found their agent there, but had confirmed that they were a good agent there. So if you're not on that program, definitely get on it. It's really helpful. Yeah, and you might be surprised to hear this, Marilyn. We have currently about 39,000 members and only about 5,000 of them are utilizing that tool. So it's it's That's definitely the, the 5,000 that are utilizing it are probably seeing um, some good interaction with consumers, but for the rest of them, it might be something they consider. <laughs> Absolutely, and you know, and I think a couple of things on that. One of the things that people I think worry about, maybe for the, the 34 that are not on it, mm -hmm. is that at some point I might get some sort of a negative rating, right? Yeah. Um, the truth is about 97% of them, or maybe it's not that high up, 92 I think it is, are completely positive. Mm -hmm. So the chances of getting that are very, very low. But also, if you do have, and not necessarily like terrible, but you know, we we all know transactions don't all go perfectly. Mm -hmm. um, if there's a little bit of feedback that's honest, um, sometimes that actually from a consumer perspective makes them more credible. Because if you go to a place and everything is, I got 100% ratings and everything's amazing, they feel like the system sort of being gamed. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the other thing is that some people are worried because they may only have, you know, two or three transactions. That doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. If you're, especially if you're younger into the game, but you've had great experience and you can demonstrate that you promote yourself well on Facebook or on HAR or other places, mm -hmm. consumers are okay with that because many of them are young and new in their careers as well. So mm -hmm. don't be afraid of it. It's a, it's by far, one of the most important tools that you should use today to help with consumers. Great. So what we know what they're looking for in a realtor, but what are they looking for in a home? Um, and, and I know we, we mentioned millennials earlier, what, uh, but different demographics, what do you think they're looking for in a home? Well, that's a tough one because of course <laughs> we all have different needs, right? Sure. Um, the millennial types are telling us, and I'll jump to the others in a minute that, um, they like to have homes that where they can do some DIY, but not where they have to rip out walls and <laughs> replace kitchens and things like that. They want to put they their personal touch. The <laughs> yeah, their personal touch is okay, but not like gutting the place and starting over, right? Mm -hmm. That's a little that's a little too much. Um, you know, many people are, are I, I think people are getting a little more practical about their homes. They're they're really looking for things that are gonna make them their family comfortable, but they're also not even looking for the home as much as the location of the home. Mm -hmm. So is it close to the, you know, the church I prefer? I'm, I'm a big Trader Joe's fan. I'd never live more than five miles away from a Trader Joe's. <laughs> um, you know, we, we all have our, it's kind of getting to be more lifestyle than it is just the home itself. Mm -hmm. We had the era where everybody was just trying to make bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger homes, sort of the McMansions as some people call them. Right. Um, it's not as much that now as I think it is more practicality, um, comfort, uh, warmth, and in and, and some demographics, um, guest houses or guest quarters are becoming more important. I'm, I have, I'm an example of that, where you have your parents that are now going to be living with you because they're elderly and mm -hmm. need support. And then sometimes those become the places where your college kids that can't afford to own a house yet live after the fact, right? right. So some of those kinds of, sec, you know, sort of dual family approaches are getting very popular as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, I'm going to take a look to see if we have any questions from our members. If you have a question for Marilyn, go ahead and type it into the comments. Uh, just take a look and see what we have so far. So, um, Stephen just had a comment here. He said, the clients that think realtors are just door openers are the ones that require the most work. <laughs> um, but I think he probably means in just convincing them, like you said, explain what you're doing. You know, somebody right. lost a client because they didn't realize it was going to go in the MLS, right? So explaining all of the different things that you're doing to benefit that um, client 
right? To, to make them understand yeah. that. And here, here's a different thing. And this is something that realtors generally are very positive people and they don't think about this necessarily, but this is something that can be really helpful. Sometimes things go wrong in transactions, right? We all know that. And sometimes if you can talk about something that did go wrong, but more, more importantly, what you did fix it mm -hmm. and how, because you learned that lesson or that you've seen something happen, that that won't happen with them, that can really generate a lot of credibility. Mm -hmm. You know, as someone that's an eye buyer, that's such a very flat process, right? You send in information, they decide yes or no, and the way you go. Mm -hmm. There's a lot more to it than that, as we all know. Mm -hmm. um, so to the degree you can share not only the positive things and all of the amazing experience you've had, but the things where you've seen it gone wrong and your ability to fix it can give them confidence that if something does go wrong in their transaction, you're going to be there for them. And I think, too, that that would help also with future clients as well. I mean, we were just talking about online reviews. If you're explaining this obstacle you had to overcome, yes. they're going to tell their friends and family about it. They might put it in the in the online review they give you after the fact and and explain how you, you know, overcame this obstacle. The the deal almost didn't go through. And then, you know, Marilyn fixed it. Right. Save so, the day. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, save the day. Yeah. No, that is very, very important. Again, realtors do, are so good at their jobs. They and they don't want to burden their clients with challenges, which I totally understand. But after the fact, once the challenge has been handled, it's not a bad idea to let them know that you took them through something that they weren't even aware of and didn't have to struggle with or, or stress about on their own. Yeah, definitely. Um, so someone asked, actually Karen asked, uh, how can we get on the mailing list for wa the WAVE group? Do you, do you have a mailing list, Marilyn? We do. In fact, if I, I can just give you my email address, send it to me. You can go to our website, which is wavgroup.com, and you can sign up for the newsletter or just if you want to drop me a quick email at Marilyn, M-A-R-I-L-Y-N, at wave group or wav group wav group.com i'm happy to add you to our, our newsletter very good thank you okay uh jennifer said do you have any advice on clients that want to look at many many houses and don't seem to really like any of them <laughs> <laughs> boy if i did i'd be a lot wealthier than i am today <laughs> that's a <laughs> tough one um you know i mean i think sometimes maybe it could be the the way you qualify them. And I, I know I, I was one of those when I came to California, so I'm sorry <laughs> to whoever realtor, I may do that. Um, but, you know, maybe some more discussion up front with them about, you know, the kinds of things that are really important or maybe having them, you know, go to a site like HIR and just grab a few homes that really catch their eye and help them help you understand. And, you know, another thing to use is something like a house. Mm -hmm. Because if you can find, like, you know, a lot of people are, are really looking for that, that amazing kitchen or that amazing right. master bedroom or things like that. If they can help you visually understand what they're looking for, um, that can help a lot because then you can do the searching for them and say, I'm not going to invite them to anything that doesn't have a, you know, a granite, granite countertop, you know, whatever. There's a million things that people like. Or if they, they have specific appliances that they really want or the backyard has to be amazing or it's all about the pool or if you can find that out a little bit sometimes that can help but unfortunately i don't think there's any answer for some some just want to look at a lot of houses unfortunately um yeah house h-o-u-z-z dot com if you if you've never used that before um they actually let you share idea boards and things like that so you can create an idea board and share it with your client or vice versa and and i think that that's an excellent uh suggestion to to share information. And so you have a better idea of what they're looking for. And, you know, maybe they can get a clear, more clear idea of what they're looking for if they're just maybe overwhelmed. Exactly. Right. Well, and then the other thing is to qualify kind of what I was talking about earlier about how much work are they willing to put in and, and sort of how much vision do they have? Like we have a house for sale in our neighborhood right now, gorgeous layout, gorgeous view, but it has like wallpaper from 1992 on the wall, on the walls. Right. So, Someone that can see past that can say, wow, this house has great bones and I'll be fine. But many consumers cannot see mm -hmm. through that, as you guys are well aware that are on the call. Um, so if you know that, then just avoid those kind of homes because that's just going to get them frustrated. Just find the ones that are that are closer and fresher and newer. Yeah. All right. Well, that actually looks like all the um, questions coming in from our members. Do you have anything that you want to add, Marilyn? Um. No, I think, you know, I, I, we do a lot of work in technology and, you know, I'm sure many of you have embraced technology, but
But I, I guess I just would leave it with reminding us all about what makes a realtor amazing and really what, it, what makes them amazing is service. Mm -hmm. Consumers are looking for you to really care about them, to genuinely listen to them, um, and, you know, and to really just be there for them. So sometimes I think we get caught up in, oh, I have to learn 40 new technologies and all this other stuff. The truth is you just have to be an amazing service professional. Um, and one thing unrelated to the consumer per se, but it's kind of related is uh, if any of you on the call do not have any sort of a, a system for managing um, clients and prospects all the way from the beginning of the process all the way through, please do that because if you don't get up every single day calling people, writing to people, having showings, doing everything in every stage of the sales process, your business is going to be a lot tougher to be successful. So re remind, remember that you can't just, you know, get a lead from HAR and it falls into the bottom and makes money. That's not how it works, right? <laughs> you have to get up every day, slug away at it every day. And when you do that, when you have great positive sales activities, sales activities that are, that are done right will lead to business. We forget right. that sometimes. So it's, it's not complicated, but we all as salespeople forget that sometimes. Yeah, sure. Um, so actually Angelina, actually first Adriana said she back to the clients that are wanting to look at a lot of homes. She said, I like to ask what their top four priorities in the house are. And that typically helps her. So mm -hmm. kind of like you were saying, doing yes. that work. Yeah. Yes. Angelina asked earlier in the conversation, you mentioned that HR has transaction uh, a transaction management tool that, and she's asking, what is that tool? Um, that's actually transaction desk. And that is a tool that is free for all HR members to use. So um, definitely check that out. We have classes, webinars, videos, um, all kinds of great resources for you to learn how to use transaction desk. Yeah. And consumers love that because you can invite them into the transaction and they can see everything that's happening. So again, some people, as you know, some clients are like, you know, hand me the keys and I'm good. Others are very, very engaged and want to know what's going on, especially if they're newer at the process. And Transaction Desk makes it really easy to do that. It also connects really well into Matrix. Mm -hmm. so it auto populates a lot of the information. It makes it a lot easier and a lot faster to close a deal. So definitely use Transaction Desk if you don't already. Um, Ginger's asking, what tool uh, do you suggest to use to market to a certain market or niche group? Well, again, HAR has, has some great things there. Um, you guys have Realist, correct? Yes, we do. So Realist has some great um, neighborhood level, zip code level prospecting opportunities within it. So mm -hmm. does Matrix. Um, yes. You know, you can, you can add, you can find people that are in a particular neighborhood in Realist, add them into Matrix, and then provide them ongoing automated, which you don't have to touch, right? Mm -hmm. Automated feedback about what's happening in the market, and I believe HAR also offers the property watch. Am I correct about that? Um, so we do have access, not to prop property watch that I'm aware of, but we do have Remind. Um, and actually there, those reports are built into to Matrix as well. So Remind, like you're saying, does provide a lot of that information as well. Remind is amazing. So it can, that can help you not only, it can tell, do you all different things. So say that a, someone that might want to be thinking about doing investing in real estate, mm -hmm. and they want to understand the market, where there's a lot more real estate investors on average, where the, the neighborhood really is friendly to investors, you can pull a report that'll say that. Or if you want to pull somebody that, um, you know, consumers that have been in their homes for more than seven years. So there's a variety of different ways to slice and dice the information. So if you have a question that you want to use for prospecting, or if someone's coming to you asking about the neighborhood, Remind is an incredible tool for that. So if you have not gotten trained on that yet, Please do. The other thing that's really neat about it is um, for the um, consumers that are, again, more data centric, which there's a lot of smart people in Houston that like that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, it has amazing data visualization. So you don't even have to use the words. You can just show them a picture and say almost like little heat maps that'll say, you know, this neighborhood is really strong at this particular thing or this, you know, the demographics of this market is younger than another market, all of those kinds of things. So, again, if you haven't checked out Remind, Definitely do that. It's really helpful for prospecting. Great. Um, Kareem just said, uh, what about social marketing? Uh, so social, social marketing. A little bit earlier, but. Yeah, there, there's, I mean, there's a lot of different things you can do there. Certainly you can go on to Facebook and places like that and buy your own ads. There's products like AdWorks, if any of you haven't seen that, which is great for 
personal branding. Mm -hmm. um, what's neat about AdWorks, if you don't know what that is, and um, is if if you have my email address as a as a prospect, it will follow you around. It'll follow me around. So an ad for you will show up on um, the Wall Street Journal. Then it'll show up on Facebook. Then it'll show up on LinkedIn. Then it'll it'll show up in a variety of places and. <laughs> For sellers, they think, wow, they are spending a lot of money promoting my home. So it's a really neat way to build a deeper um, sort of brand awareness, if you will, with people that you're interested in doing business with. Great. All right. Well, that looks like it's about it. Thank you so much, for, Marilyn, for joining us. This has been really helpful. Oh, great. Thank you. Thank you, Christina. And good luck to everybody. Hope you have a great day. All right. Thank you. Okay. Um, well, that's it for today. Uh, thank you for joining us. We'll be back same time, same place next Monday. We'll see you then. Bye-bye.